After the defeat at the end of World War II, Japan was deprived of any military capability. The Japanese had to get rid of all tanks, all aircraft, basically all combat vehicles that they still had. But that's how things were right after the war. Only five years passed and there was a new war in the region, the war on the Korean Peninsula, and it forced the US to reconsider their stance. They decided that there was no reason to continue keeping thousands of their troops in the occupied country. And after some negotiations between two governments, Japan was allowed to establish their own Japan Self-Defense Forces, basically a de facto army which legally wasn't considered one. As most combat vehicles that were once used by Japanese military were scrapped or destroyed, the tankers of the fledgling army had to rely on American Shermans and Chaffees. By the mid-1950s, both tanks were severely outdated, but there was nothing to replace them with. The US suggested that the Japanese should buy M47 Patton II tanks as a stopgap measure. Local military officials liked the tank's configuration and its 90mm gun, but its size and weight made the tank unviable for use in Japan. In the end, Mitsubishi was given a task to develop a brand new MBT. By the end of the decade, there were several prototypes of the future vehicle. The STA-1 and the STA-2 shared quite a few similarities to the M47 in their configuration, shape and armament choice. The transmission was on its left with a major part of it directly behind frontal armor. The main difference between the STA-1 and the STA-2 was their upper glacy plate was angled at a different angle and that the second vehicle had a taller profile. The changes made to the STA-3 were more substantial, including a new transmission, a slightly different gun of the same caliber, new optics, and a new auto-loading system which, after thorough testing, was deemed too unreliable and too expensive. As a result, the final prototype of the new tank, the STA-4, had no auto-loader, but it received a new Commander Coppola and a few minor improvements. By 1961, the STA-4 was chosen as the production model and entered the service as the Type 61. But that was around the time when the Soviets were already testing their T-62, the British the Chieftain, the French the AMX-30, and the Germans the Excellent Leopard. All of those were next-generation MBTs with new guns and more powerful engines. The brand new Type 61, barely out of the factory, seemed outdated in comparison. And so the Japanese turned to Mitsubishi once again to develop a more advanced successor. The first prototype of the new vehicle, the STB-1, was ready by the end of the 1960s. It was very much in line with global trends, with a stabilized British L7 cannon, a 750 horsepower engine, and also with a locally designed hydropneumatic suspension allowing the crew to change the ground clearance on the fly. The engineers also intended to equip the tank with an auto loader and a remote controlled anti air machine gun, but both of those features were eventually dropped to keep the costs as low as possible. The final prototype of the tank was accepted into service in 1974 as the Type 74 MBT, and its variations are still being used by the JSDF. In the 1990s, the Japanese developed the last tanks of the series of the G variant, equipped with thermal sights and a laser warning system, but they never made it into production. Sadly, the Type 64 followed in the predecessor's footsteps. It was a decent tank all round, but it had a hard time keeping up with technological advances of the world.
While Japan was busy catching up with the previous generations of MBTs, other nations were already testing new vehicles equipped with composite armor and modern smoothbore guns. But then, the Japanese managed to close the distance with a single mighty leap by introducing the STC project, intended to replace the Type 74. The new vehicle, which was in development throughout the 1980s, was an attempt to integrate the best features of contemporary Western tanks into something that was essentially a new, completely indigenous tank design. It had a hydropneumatic suspension, composite armor, a Rheinmetall 120mm smoothbore gun, a conveyor belt type autoloader, an advanced FCS. All in all, it was an extremely advanced vehicle. In 1992, the final prototype of the tank was accepted into service as the Type 90. As it cost Japan more than $8 million to produce a single Type 90, they were never produced en masse. But the MBT is still in active duty with the JSDF. In 2010, Mitsubishi developed a vehicle that was even cheaper, lighter, and more modern all at the same time. The Type 10 is armed with a powerful Japanese gun. It has an improved armor arrangement and features a C-41 system that enables sharing of information with other branches of the JSDF as required by the new military doctrine. Even though the Japan Self-Defense Forces were founded more than half a century ago, their combat vehicles were never a part of any large-scale conflict. In War Thunder, though, all those MBTs are waiting for you at the highest ranks of the ground forces tech tree. And these highly versatile vehicles are more than capable of defeating rival designs from other major players of the global tank industry. What do you think about them? Do you have any favorites? Tell us, come on guys, in the comments below. We'd love to find out.